Well, the Cougars played the Ducks back in 89 and 90. The most recent meeting was 06 in Vegas, but they had a two-game series that Ty Detmer played in. He now joins us live from uh, Arizona. And uh, great to have you back on the program, Ty, as we talk about BYU and Oregon. Some people said, hey, we don't want to talk about the 90 game, so we can just talk about 89 if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd prefer to talk about that one myself. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they were they were ready for us. A uh, little revenge factor. Um, you know, I didn't practice all week that that year. I had a hand injury, and so we kind of showed up, and we didn't play very well. So a lot of people accused them of wetting down the field and making the turf slippery and all that. But uh, bottom line, they were ready for us, and it wasn't uh, wasn't our finest hour that year. Let's talk about 90, and then we'll talk about 89, shall we, since you went there. Um, you walk in ranked fourth, 4-0, obviously the Miami win. A Washington State comeback that people forget, which is unbelievable, 36 points in, in that quarter, which uh, for a long time was the most in a quarter until I think App State against North Carolina put up like 39 or something. It was crazy. You throw for 442, two touchdowns, five picks at five times. Why was 90 so different from 89 other than, as you mentioned, you had a hand injury, which is a big deal for a quarterback? Yeah, it, it uh, you know, it was just kind of one of those things where we'd beat Miami, we'd come off of, you know, a great comeback against Washington State, and then we just kind of fell flat a little bit in Eugene. But like I said, that, that was a tough stadium to play in. Um, you know, the crowd was really into it. Uh, we just, you know, we were outmatched that day emotionally. Um, they were ready to go, and uh, we just kind of came in and, and felt a little bit flat, but we just – didn't come in with our best day, and and it showed. So one of those games. You talked about uh, the alleged drenching the field before the game. So did it happen or did it not, Ty? <laughs> I don't think it did, but, you know, we came in with different turf shoes on and, you know, kind of the flat bottoms, and you really probably needed the nubs. So you'd have to talk to the receivers and <laughs> DBs a little about that. But uh, I wasn't known for my burst, so I probably didn't slip much. I was more of a mutter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then we flash back to, uh, and in 90, you overcame that to win the Heisman. It's not like, oh, that didn't work out. You lost. <laughs> Nowadays, I think if, if that performance kind of happens, you maybe slip back a little bit. Great timing in 90. You took care of business there and obviously win it later when that's the only loss you have going in uh, to Hawaii. But we flash back to 1989. Uh, this is a game where you had to score 24 points in the fourth to win it. 470, three touchdowns. Bill Musgrave threw for 489. I've read that at the time that was the NCAA combined record. What do you uh, for passing yards from two quarterbacks? What do you remember about that one? Yeah, that was a shootout. Uh, they had a uh, All American corner, um, and Odom, I believe, was his last name, and he was a guy that you know we had to kind of watch out for. And I think Jeff Franson ended up catching three or four TDs on the guy, and uh, you know it was it was a fun game because it was a you know a comeback at the end and. But they had good teams then, you know, they played good football. They were wide open with Bill Musgrave and, um, you know, they, they had athletes. So it wasn't really any different than it was nowadays. You know, they, they had guys that could run, could play, putting guys in the NFL. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a fun day because we were able to come back and, and uh, have a comeback win that night. Jeff Franson, as you mentioned, 10 for 188 and three. Basically, that's what we call a Chase Roberts around these parts. That was a tremendous performance. What did you think, um, and before we get to Baylor, tell us about playing in Autzen. You mentioned the crowd, and they've been good for a long time. Certainly, they emerged in the 2000s even more with Chip Kelly and Marcus Mariota and the spread and the speed and the, the, zo the zone read uh, running. What is it about Autzen and that crowd that makes it difficult to play in? Well, you know, they'll be ready for BYU after coming off the Baylor victory and ranked uh, high now uh, in the polls. They're going to they're going to be ready. I remember, you know, when we showed up, they had all the tie dyed shirts and it was tie dyed in Eugene. And <laughs> so, uh, it was pretty clever, you know, but they're a great crowd. The student section, you know, gets into it. They love their football there and, and they've been successful the last few years. So, uh, you know, I think you see what, what Georgia did to them and that probably lit a fire under them. Maybe that they were thinking they were too good and, and uh, probably a wake up call for them. So it ought to be a really good game. Um, I know they'll be ready for BYU and just the type of atmosphere they have. There will be great atmosphere to play in. 
They're good. It's just how good because they played Georgia and Georgia's amazing. Like you mentioned, it's hard to it's hard to assess any opponent of Georgia at this point. And then they play Eastern Washington. They have 40 first downs, a program record. They score in the first nine drives. Those two uh, disparate uh, performances, it's hard to assess as a, as a, a high school coach and former college coach, of course. How, how do you, would you assess a team, Ty, like that, where you don't have kind of this average game? You have kind of the, the low and the high there. Well, you take a little bit of the between for both. You know, uh, Georgia really just, I mean, they came out of the gate and jumped on them, physically beat them down. And uh, then Eastern Washington, you know, like I said, that was probably a wake-up call for Oregon, and we got to do better and a great week of practice. And all of a sudden, you know, they were the dominant team. And so you kind of – Take a little bit of both and, uh, you know, probably somewhere in the middle there, but probably closer to what you saw last week. So, um, you know, they'll have a lot of pride and, and with BYU being ranked higher than them, they'll they'll want to come out and have a great showing. And, you know, BYU is coming off an emotional win, double overtime against Baylor. So it, it's a little bit of that catch game, you know, kind of like we had in in 1990. Absolutely, and it, that was the first top 10 win at home since Miami, which is pretty crazy to think about. We revere that win as the greatest win in program history, and we hadn't had a win like that since until Saturday, which is crazy. We're talking to Ty Detmer on BYU Sports Nation. Ty, what would you think of BYU's performance against Baylor? Because there was a lot going into that game, given the Big 12, given the ranking, given uh, Baylor's performance against BYU last year, and the Cougars pulled it off. It was a minor miracle. <laughs> Well, I, I think it was a solid win for the program. Uh, you know, Baylor's a, a great football team, and so had chances to win it a little earlier and uh, didn't work out, but they hung in there, showed that that grit and that will to win, and uh, came away with the, the W in double overtime. So it's a, it's a great way to start and, and a great victory at home, and now you got to back it up to, to prove, you know, that's a credible victory. So this will be a big game for them as well. BYU has a similar situation to what you had, not to the same degree, but that level uh, of beating Miami, beating Baylor, expectations. You're up high in the polls, BYU now 12. You're going to Eugene. It's a very similar situation in 90, right? What's your advice for a team like BYU that is very veteran, with COVID perhaps the most veteran of any BYU team ever, of ensuring that you walk out with the win and keep this thing going? Yeah, it's just keep grinding, you know, and, and I think the coaching staff does a great job of that is, is not putting too much weight into, into a win or a loss, you know, um, it's, it's keep grinding, keep getting better. You know, the, the preseason rankings are always tough. You never know where teams are from the year to year. Um, it's almost a little bit like high school, you know, you lose some guys and, and you hope some other guys step up and you never know until uh, the bullets start flying in a live game. So, um, you know, this is one of those where we've got some guys that have stepped in last week uh, with Chase Roberts and a couple of those guys that still are hungry and a lot to prove. So that's got to be the mentality for the whole team. You know, we've still got a lot to prove and it's early in the year and nobody's accomplished anything at this point. You had interactions with Jaron Hall, uh, you know, when he was, I, I believe, on his mission in, in 16 and 17. And what's your, been your insight as a former quarterback watching this guy progress from he's waited his time to right now he's the most successful BYU quarterback ever against Power 5 teams? Yeah, I think he's everything everybody thought he would be. Um, you know, he was, he was committed to BYU when I was coaching there. And then, you know, when the coaching change happened, they kind of reassessed things and got to sit down with him. But I'd worked with him at some of our, our QB elite camps and things like that and really, really loved his demeanor, his – his mannerisms, uh, and then he can make every throw, and he's athletic enough to extend plays and and uh, beat you, you know, running the ball. Uh, so the the guy's a, a great combination in the quarterback position of that poise and leadership, and then uh, the athletic talent to, to go with it. So he's having a great season to start with here. Great year last year, and um, I know it's it's a lot easier that second year as a starter because you've kind of been through it. You understand what's expected, and he's showing that, that that's the case this year with a, a great win last week and now a chance to prove it again on the road this week. How have you seen him evolve over time from when you first met him to uh, what he's doing now? Well, he was real similar then. I mean, just a low-key, you know, calm young man that uh, – you know, had confidence, but not overly confident. So he was a great, 
blend of, of that type of attitude. And so um, he's just progressed and obviously matured as a family and, and been on a mission. So, you know, the maturity factor is obviously there. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I think he's everything we thought he would be uh, coming out of high school. Have you ever hugged a kicker at the end of the game, Ty? <laughs> of course. Yeah, those, they're your best friends when they make a kick to win. Uh, <laughs> and then you got to put your arm around them when you lose and you yep. miss one too because you're going to need them later in the year. So Absolutely. Uh, that was a great picture of him just, you know, being that leader and, and bringing it together and probably telling him, hey, we're going to need you at some point in the season. So shake it off. We, you know, we all have our, our moments. And so uh, we're counting on you down the road. You got a game tonight? We do. We uh, we play South Mountain. We're two and zero. Moved up to five A this year. Uh, here in Arizona is a little different. They go based off success. So we're two and zero and five A, and got some uh, some tough games coming. So we're we're having a good time keeping Max Hall under control. We got old man Workman out here. He's coaching legend. He coaches track with us, and and he's around, always giving us grief. So he's a he's a big uh, fan of the show. So he's probably tuning in right now. Very so nice. Give him I know you I know you lost Dennis and it's probably it was probably an upgrade for your staff but Ty best of luck tonight uh, with ALA against South Mountain we appreciate the time man all right appreciate it